my first question to you is how would you describe your shift of turning down a well paying corporate job to starting an entrepreneurial success okay um i i am not sure if i should call uh, the venture a success already of course there's a long way to go we have very very big dreams and uh, we uh, you know but yeah if i look at my own definition of success i always think that if you have the freedom to do whatever you want without being scared of failing i think that's success so by that definition i think uh, you know it's not bad um, i think uh, you know when i turned down that job offer uh, when i was 23 years old um, of course i wasn't um, very sure of what i was signing up for uh but i have this philosophy that i don't want to have regrets um, you know and if i think that you know and i was really passionate about being an entrepreneur i was really passionate about creating something about building a company and um i just knew that if i don't do this now i will probably regret this for the rest of my life so i just took the plunge if i had known how hard it's going to be i probably would not have been able to but luckily uh, you know at that time i thought it would be much easier and i just took the plunge did the uncertainty scare you about building something independently so i'm not from a business family and of course it was uh, very scary um, and uh, but you know honestly when you are like studying at i am the bad the learning about businesses uh, you know on paper you really have no idea how hard it is to actually create one uh, so i learned more about how hard it is to you know scale your own business in the next few years and um, it was scary but it you know as a you know 23 year old you are very bold and ambitious and you think that anything is possible and uh, that was my philosophy and that's how i jumped into it and of course the first few years were very very hard so i you know constantly had second thoughts of whether i did the right decision um any large business takes many many years of struggle before it really takes off uh, but the real trick is to hang in there and keep working on it patiently and luckily i persevered for many many years before the breakthroughs happened and sugar like happened and it actually turned out to be a brand that uh, at least consumers love can you like briefly tell us what exactly all went into creating sugar cosmetics so uh we were actually back in 2015 before we launched sugar we were running an e-commerce company and our core customers were these young millennial women uh, you know uh, maybe like yourself who were very active on social media and uh, you know we realized that there was a big shift happening with this generation uh, where they were uh, a beginning to wear more makeup uh, unlike their moms um, they were stepping out more so they wanted products that helped them be unstoppable had the products that lasted them all day and thirdly they were inspired by other real women and not really looking up to celebrities saying i want to be like a celebrity but looking at their friends and seeing that you know inspired by them um so they wanted products that could really work for their individual uh, skin tones including the warmest and the deepest and they what were wanted products that could uh, uh tolerate the indian weather conditions and still last all day and they could uh, they wanted products that could be in on the biggest global trends but in a way that suited their indian aesthetic so i think sugar was born you know this consumer was at the heart of sugar's birth and um, you know we had a lot of these women telling us that they weren't happy with the products that were there in the market and that's why we created this brand which was born as a new age beauty brand to really use this consumer insight and you know use this uh, passion that the younger women had for uh, products that were more inclusive products that were more long lasting products that were more matte products that were more um, you know a uh, great felt international but really affordable that kind of product and um, so that that's how we got around to launching sugar um, sugar is currently a makeup brand uh, we have products like you know our best selling products are like really long lasting matte lipstick but we also have have like fantastic foundations eyeliners and um, we're currently uh, like the makeup market in india is actually very large 8500 crore uh, we're still a very small player with about 2% market share but our ambition is much bigger we want to grow we think that we can grow 5 to 10 times from here 
coming to my next question uh, how did your relationship with your business partner koshik mukherji who also happens to be your husband reflect on building a cosmetic empire i think you know uh, before we launched um, this company um, koshik was working with mckinty and i had i was running another company of my own and um, we never really thought about uh, working together but we had a lot of uh, respect for um, you know each other's skill set and we realized that we actually have like a complementary skill set like you know the kind of things that uh, excites koshik are very different from the kind of thing that excites me i like uh you know product development i like sales koshik likes marketing koshik likes so tech um so we and so koshik wanted to create something in using e-commerce social media and i wanted to create like brand for women so we realized that uh, you know there was like a big synergy in both of us coming together and starting something which could actually address both of our passions and um, we were of course very very scared because you know people told us that like you should have like a prenuptial or something so it's very hard to get into a business partnership wow. with your husband uh, but uh, you know for us the fundamentals were very clear that you know we have a lot of respect for uh, each other's skill set and uh, you know a common passion and that's when we decided to take the plunge and start i think it's been a fantastic journey uh, first few years was of course very hard because as you get used to you know drawing the boundaries between professional and personal and you know trying to like we would have like our professional arguments coming into our personal life and our personal arguments going into our professional life so of course first few um, years were hard uh, but i think over a period of time we figured out a way of working together and not killing each other um, i think uh, you know there were multiple times like you know when we launched the company together then you know there were times when the company was struggling and you know we had to really fight back and then of course we had kids at every single time and now covid i mean at every single time of course our relationship has been put to test but uh, luckily we've come out of it uh, stronger and uh, i think it's a great partnership and I, i highly recommend it that you know if you have like respect for each other i think you could figure out a way to work to a business together well that's a great uh, you know piece of advice you have for all of us so uh, is there like any specific personal challenges in your professional life that you faced um i mean we i think the biggest would be that obviously we have like a lot of difference of opinion um so we have a lot of arguments on uh, at the end of the day even if you um you know have like data for most decisions there will still be 30 40% decisions which are very subjective and uh, then it's your opinion versus mine so i think uh, the biggest challenges have been around uh, you know uh, the differences of opinion that we have on what we want to do with the company at various points of time uh, but we've uh, i think the good thing has been that uh, we've figured out a way where uh, depending on whether it is um, it comes under my functions or under koshik's functions um, we even if we disagree with something we hear the other person's point of view and then we still work together to make this uh, really um, succeed so we have this we don't really rub the other person by saying i told you so see you proven wrong you know i think so we've learned over a period of time how to keep the ego at the door and just focus on what's in the best interest for the company or what's in the best interest for the family and i think many times when we get bogged down by these uh, koshik has a way of asking this question where he asks you that you know do you think it's going this is going to matter in 5 years and you know i think that's like a really helps you move out of zoom out of that situation and think about the bigger picture and think that you know this is what we are creating together and we don't want to get petty fights to distract us or derail us from the things that really matter so i think uh, the biggest challenges have been around um, you know having various at various points of time differences of opinion but i think we've figured out a way to work through those and still emerge stronger what do you have to say to our viewers about maintaining a healthy work relationship between partners specifically business partners who are also you know like engaged to each other or are each other's life partners i think uh, firstly i would say that uh, it does require boundaries so uh, you know before we started we actually took a piece of paper and wrote down all the functions that existed and mapped who would be in charge of which functions and agreed to each other that we would stay out of each other's way 
in those functions. So which means that if there is anything regarding product development, then it's you know my decision. Um, even if Kaushik has a difference of opinion, he will express it, but I still get to take a call. Similarly, uh, you know, in regards to e-commerce, he gets to take the final call. I think that really helped us create a stay out of each other's way. I think the biggest challenge that happens is that if you're with the same person night and day in office and they're at home and they're on trips, um, you know, the, the, the sense of boundary gets lost and, you know, you're as individuals not able to find our own uh, space and our own freedom to create and be ourselves. So I think creating those clear boundaries and, uh, you know, so which means that if it's COVID and we're locked up at home, we'd still work in separate rooms and, you know, do our meetings in separate rooms so that we have like this sense of boundary rather than like just being holed up together. And similarly, at work, we have different functions, different teams so that, you know, we are not uh, spending a lot of time and effort in interfering with each other. I think first is, of course, boundaries. Second is, of course, trust. I think, uh, you know, the best part about running a business with somebody that you're also married to or in a relationship with is that, you know, the trust is natural, uh, but it's, you know, hard to sometimes forget that, that the reason, the why, you know, why did you start this thing together is because you trust each other and because you want to build something together. So I think whenever like you realize that some pettiness is taking over and you know the trust deficit is coming i think it's important to go back to that why and remember that you know this is why we started this and you know this is why it's important for us uh, i think third thing would be um, like i mentioned earlier keeping the ego at the door so i think you know like i i think a lot of people get a lot of thrill out of winning an argument but i think your biggest superpower can be you know just being okay to lose an argument in the interest of um, what's best for the company and that when you realize as partners that you can work together even if you have a difference of opinion on something we can still put in as much energy and effort behind making it successful rather than trying to prove that other person wrong or trying to you know say I told you so and etc it makes a big difference so I think the third is you know ego destroys a lot of marriages as well as businesses and I think if you're able to you know, focus on what really matters and leave our ego and the need to be right at the door. I think um, we can have very long lasting relationships and long lasting uh, career related partnerships as well. Well, that's, I mean, that's a great thing you've said. I get, I really think people should relate to this more. Thank you. So, yeah. So uh, you've won many accolades for being an avid runner and an all-rounder besides your fantastic career. Can you tell us a bit more about your achievements? Uh, so I, uh, you know, started running um, many years back and I've probably participated in more than uh, 40 marathons and full marathons. So marathons like a 42 kilometer race. Um, when I started um, doing ultra marathons, I uh, participated in this race called Comrades, which is an 89 kilometers ultra marathon, which is to be completed within 12 hours. And it's in South Africa over five rolling hills. Um, I actually did that race three times. Uh, one of the years I won a bronze medal um, in that um, ultra marathon. Um, I've also participated uh, along with my husband Kaushik uh, in the Ironman. Now Ironman uh, has been made famous by men and women in India. It's a, uh, you know, it's a 3.8 kilometer open water. That's a lake or a sea swim uh, followed by 180 kilometers a bicycle ride, which is then followed by a 42 kilometer run. And you have to finish all of that within 17 hours to get the medal. So I think, uh, so we did that uh, together in 2017. And um, I've, you know, a lot of... Um, half marathons as well as uh, triathlons that have happened in India. I've even um, got uh, the podium finish, which is, you know, stood either first, second or third. Um, so that's that's for the achievements. But I think, uh, you know, they are not really, I mean, these are all very amateur kind of achievements. There's nothing pro here. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, I, I genuinely think that uh, having a passion outside of work um, makes me a better person. And that's why I follow it. Okay, so uh, what are some of the mantras that you swear by uh, to maintain a healthy lifestyle amidst the loads of work? I think, um, you know, especially for women, I think, um, you know, we're, um, as women, we don't make enough time for ourselves. And I always tell my colleagues that uh, if you want to be kind to others, you have to learn to first be kind to yourself. And the 
conversely also true if you want to be hard on others you have to first learn to be hard on ourselves i think uh, you know i consider that you know i'm probably the kindest and the hardest on myself and um, by being kind i mean really creating time for things that matter to me so i have two small children and i have a business that's growing and it's easy to get carried away and you know not make personal time for things that i am passionate about um but you know many times even if it means that after a long day of like you know several calls i just you know have 20 minutes where i can run up and down the stairs i would do that um to stay fit because i think um it matters i think creating um having a passion that you are honest to and um, like ensuring that you work on it consistently uh, really matters so i think um i you know i think that you know for me to hold other people to account um i need to be accountable and that's why i bring my everything to anything that i take on whether it's work whether it's raising my family or whether it's uh, my passion for running or sports so i think i'm the kindest on myself and i'm also the hardest on myself and which keeps me going i think you know that keeps me motivated and that keeps me inspired and um so i honestly i i do believe in like eating healthy and you know staying fit uh, to be healthy but honestly you need beyond that my passion for running uh, comes from just you know realizing that for me to have like the most productive days and for me to have like a space where i have time to think about my day that's coming up i need that morning 5k run so i i think it's it's more than just staying fit it's it's more than that it is i think you know uh, being very very um focused on having that half an hour of me time where i get to do something that i'm really passionate about i, I think that's that's more important to me has the pandemic affected your job role and the organization negatively and if not how has sugar cosmetics staying is being driven to serve its customers the best possible way i think it's affected everybody negatively um definitely i mean as a business we did grow uh, last year but i think the whole impact that it's had on um you know the businesses that we partner with like our distributors our vendors on our teams like you know our teams are uh, we have team members across the country and everybody's family extended family somebody is suffering so i think just the you know right now we're just focused on one thing which is getting through the next 30 40 days um you know with no uh, major losses happening within the team and within their families i think right now the only thing that matters is for everybody to stay safe and get out of this pandemic alive um and and as a company we're just focused on that uh, but having said that over the last one and a half years there's of course been a shift from retail to e-commerce so you know we've grown as a percentage much more on our e-commerce channels because consumers have been more open to shopping online during the pandemic than stores and of course stores have also been disrupted by all the lockdowns um secondly you know as a company we were always very bullish on content and using social media to connect better with millennials and gen z consumers um so during the pandemic that happened a lot more so you know our uh, monthly impressions went from about 120 million on our um, social media platform to more than 200 million during the pandemic and that's because of the fact that women are spending a lot more time on their phones uh, we launched an app just before pandemic that now has a more than a million downloads so i think uh, these are some of the um, interesting uh, benefits that have come out of uh, the pandemic um, the you know disappointments have of course been not being able to see our team for the longest time um, you know many of our stores keep repeatedly going into shutdown and then you know somebody loses money either the landlord or us um, and of course we have retail staff more than 1500 people across the country um, it's very hard on them um, you know when there is like a very harsh lockdown so i think there have been some disappointments there have been some small wins but i think right now we are like laser focused on just ensuring everybody's safety and that's really what the only thing that matters right now so the last question uh you're a, you're a boss lady so what is that one advice you would like to give the young entrepreneurial minds of the country uh i often say that fear kills more dreams than failures ever will 
So if there's something that, you know, you're really afraid of doing, um, it's a sign that there's like a big dream that's hidden behind it. So, you know, just take the plunge, just, you know, try it out and uh, just think about it that, you know, what's the worst you can, that can happen. You can always go back to square one and try something else. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid, take the plunge, um, take those risks, because I think the hardest thing to live with is regret. Well, that's a great piece of advice. It's commendable. And I, I, I'm going to relate to that. I'm going to work by it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.